Hi everyone. In this tutorial, we will understand how to determine the voltage distribution of an insulator string. So what is the meaning of that? To understand this topic, let's see if we have our insulator string. This is our insulator string as we see. It consists of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It consists of 8 units as we see. And this is an insulator string which holds and carry the high voltage conductor like here. So, for example, if the high voltage conductor holds a voltage equals 66 kilovolt, so the whole, the whole insulator string should hold the same voltage of the high voltage conductor, which is 66 kilovolt. In this tutorial, we want to know what is the voltage that each unit of the insulator string holds. To understand that, let's know what is the meaning of each unit and how we can represent each unit of the insulator string. For the one unit of the insulator string, as we see, this is a picture of one unit of insulator string, as we see, one unit or one disc. It mainly consists of metallic link in the upper of the uh, insulator, and in the bottom of the insulator also there is a metallic link this metallic links for uh, securing and jointing the units with each others and also between the metallic link here and metallic link here there is an insulator which is made from porcelain or any insulating material this representation is of course like a capacitor as we see a conductive material like the metallic link also here a conductive material like metallic link and between them an insulator so this is of course a representation of the capacitor so we can understand that each unit can be represented by a capacitor so for this insulator string that consists of eight units each unit can be represented by a capacitor so this insulator string can be represented by eight un eight capacitors okay this is the representation of each unit so how we can make use of this uh, concept to determine the voltage distribution across each unit of insulator string. For this photo, we have also the tower and cross arm, and we have one, two, three, four, four units of an insulator string. As you see, four units of an insulator string. So each unit can be represented by a capacitor. So this configuration can be represented also by this configuration. Each unit can be represented by a capacitor. Capacitor, first capacitor, second capacitor, third capacitor, and fourth capacitor. And also we have the high voltage conductor here. Okay? The capacitor holds a voltage. We need to know that voltage. The first capacitor holds voltage V1, second capacitor holds voltage V2, and so on. The third capacitor and fourth capacitor, voltage V3 and voltage V4. The summation of the total voltages will be equal to the voltage V, which is the voltage of the power conductor. Now, we need to know the voltage V1 and V2 and V3 and V4. Now, all capacitors have the same value. Also, there is a same current that flows in each capacitor. This is the current that flows in each capacitor. Due to the same current and the same Capacitance from this two information, we can deduce that voltage V1 equals voltage V2 equals voltage V3 equals voltage V4, and each voltage equals to the total voltage V divided by 4, where 4 is the number of capacitors or number of units. So, this is the voltage distribution across each unit or each capacitor, but unfortunately, this is ideal case. That doesn't happen in the real insulator string. This is an ideal case. Now we want to, name, to know what is the practical case. Practically, there are another capacitance, which is called stray capacitance. This capacitance is between the metallic link and the earthed tower. To understand that, let's see the following picture. We have the tower, the earthed tower, and also the cross arm, and here we have an insulator 
string that consists of four units. Each unit can be represented by a capacitor, and this capacitor has the symbol C. Also, another capacitance, another capacitor, or another capacitance appears. What is this capacitor? It's called stray capacitance. Stray capacitance here between the metallic link and the earthed tower. So, is it a representation of capacitor? Let's see. Here we have a metallic link, which is conductive material. Also here we have the earth tower, which is also a conductive material. And between them, there is air, where air is, of course, an insulating material. So this is a representation of capacitor or, or capacitance, and this capacitance is called stray capacitance, where CE, it's called stray capacitance. Okay, so this is the new representation or the practical representation of the insulator string. So this is our practical representation of the insulator string. We have C, which is string capacitance, the capacitance of each unit. It's called string capacitance. And also we have another capacitance, which is called stray capacitance. Here, CE, which is called the stray capacitance. Now, this is the practical configuration or the practical case. For the practical case, we need to know the voltage V1 and voltage V2 and voltage V3 and also voltage V4. Here, voltage V1 will not be equal voltage V2, will not be equal voltage V3, will not be equal voltage V4. Why? Because the current that flows in each unit will be different from the other and another unit. As we see, the voltage that flow here in the lower unit will divide it in the current that flows in stray capacitance and the current that flows in the uh, upper capacitance. So the current will not be the same. Due to of this, the voltages will not be equal. So what is the new voltage distribution or the practical voltage distribution? Let's see the voltage distribution across the insulator string considering stray capacitance. For the practical configuration as we see, let's see how to calculate voltage V1, V2, V3, V4. First of all, we need to know that the stray capacitance is equal to the string capacitance, but this is multiplied by a factor which is called M factor. M factor is the ratio of the stray capacitance to the string capacitance and M is of course less than 1 because the stray capacitance is less than the string capacitance. To calculate voltage V2, V2 can be calculated from this formula. V2 equals M plus 1 V1 where M is the M factor can be calculated from this equation. Also V3 equals M squared plus 3M plus 1 times V1. Also V4 can be calculated as M cube plus 5M squared plus 6M plus 1, all of that times V1. Also, we have another equation, which is, of course, V1 plus V2 plus V3 plus V4 equal the total voltage V, which is the voltage of the total or the whole insulator string. So, we have four equations. In four unknowns, by solving these equations, we will find V2 and V1 and V3 and V4. So, these are the voltages and how we can determine the, the voltages of each unit in the practical configuration. Also, we need to find another value, which is the string efficiency. String efficiency can be calculated from this equation. Eta equals voltage V, which is the total voltage of the insulator string divided by N where n is the number of units or number of uh, string capacitances times V maximum. What is V maximum? It's the maximum voltage that the unit can hold. It's always the voltage of the lower capacitance because the lower capacitance has a large current. And we know that the voltage is proportional to the current in the capacitor as the current in the lower capacitor or the capacitor that's close to the high voltage conductor has high current so it will hold a higher voltage so the voltage v maximum is of course will be 
the voltage V4. So V maximum can be calculated from the uh, voltage across the uh, lower capacitor or the capacitor that uh, near to the high voltage conductor. And from this equation, we can calculate string efficiency. In the next tutorial, we will see how to determine the voltage V1, V2, V3, V4, and how the unequal voltage distribution across the units can affect the performance of the whole insulator string. So thank you and see you in the next tutorial.